when we create a project, we're going to have many different classes inside our project and putting them all inside one file is not really a good idea to maximize our workflow uh, because we need to scroll and scroll and scroll in order to get to the different classes. So grouping them in different places inside our project is much better to do. So when we create a new class, it's a good idea to put them inside a separate file so we don't get them all mixed up together and have them all inside one document. And the way we do that is by going over to our Solution Explorer window, which is over here. We right click on our project, which in my case is called First Project. Then we go down to where it says Add. Then we go down to Class. And then you can see it opens up a new uh, little window here. Then inside the pop-up, we want to make sure we choose the c -sharp class that we have over here. And we also make sure to give it a name. So down here, we could call it something specific like, uh, right now we're making a class that is called person. So maybe we should actually go ahead and call this one person. So we're going to say person, and then just go ahead and add it here. Now, of course, we also need to go ahead and add in the actual class that we created before. So we're going to go back inside our program file, and we're just gonna go ahead and copy the class and then just delete it. And then we're just gonna go ahead and move it inside the new file we created. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace class person with our new public class person that we created in the previous project here. Now, one thing you're going to notice is when we create a new class file, they're all going to end up in the same namespace. So if we were to go over inside Solution Explorer, you can actually see that we have our program.cs, which is the original file we had. And then we have the new file we just created called person.cs. Now, in some cases, we're going to have many, 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 many different types of class files. So grouping them together in specific directories or namespaces is much better a solution than having them all in one place. So the way we're going to create a new namespace is by going over here and then right clicking first project again. Then we're going to say add, and then we're going to create a new folder. When we do this, we're gonna go ahead and call this one something. So we need to have all the different classes that sort of belong together inside this folder. So we could say there is a, a, a namespace called people. So anytime we create any sort of class files that we think goes under the category of people, we put them inside this namespace here. So we're to click enter. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my person.cs file because persons goes under people, at least in my head it does. So I'm going to take it and just move it into people. Now it's going to come with a pop-up. So we're just gonna go ahead and say we want to say okay. And then it's going to move it inside this directory here. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that we were to go inside the person.cs file. Uh, the namespace has not changed yet. So whenever we create a new namespace inside our project file over here, we do actually need to add that inside our namespace up here. So inside the person.cs file, we're going to say dot people, which is the name of the new namespace we have here. So now we're actually telling it that we're inside the right namespace because otherwise it's going to throw us an error at some point. So if I were to say I have another class called car, because a car could be owned by a person if I sort of want to categorize it in that way, I could also take the car and put it under people, maybe house could have some different uh, fields and different methods. I could put that under people as well. So anytime I create a class that I think goes under this category here, we can put them under people. And in that way, we get a much cleaner setup when it comes to our project over here. So now that we moved our person class inside a separate namespace called firstproject.people, I will get an error message inside my project because if we were to go back inside my program file, you'll actually notice that we no longer have access to the person class. And that's because when we use a class from inside another namespace, we need to make sure we link to that namespace at the top of the document in order to gain access to that specific class. So up here at the top of my program.cs file, we do actually need to add in the new namespace that we just created inside our Solution Explorer. So I'm going to say we have using, and then I'm going to write first project dot people, semicolon. And you will actually notice that it does actually light up in white up here because we are using information from inside this namespace right now by referring to the class down here. So you can actually see that these up here are actually grayed out. So we could actually essentially just delete those because we're not using any information from inside one of those namespaces. Now, there's one more thing I want to show regarding the previous episode where we talked about access modifiers. So if I were to go inside my person class and remove the public keyword, from my method called greeting, then you'll actually notice that inside our program file, we can no longer gain access to this greeting method. And that's because it is set to, or I removed the public keyword, meaning that we can no longer gain access to it publicly. 
even if it were to go inside and write something like private, it would actually mean that we can only gain access to this method from within this specific class here, and we still cannot gain access to it from inside this document here. So if I want to use this specific method outside this class, then I do need to use public as a keyword in order to gain access to this specific method here. And that's all I want to show in this episode here. In the next one, we're going to talk about something called static modifiers, which is something you will be using from time to time. So we need to know how to create static modifiers. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.